to there and I'll start with the riser. It's pretty easy to keep it maneuvering if I just keep tension on it while someone else put the cap on and I would pinch it in place and it wouldn't be able to get out of there. You can also, if you have a cast top, you cast the pins in your top and push the wool into the pins and fold them over to maintain it. Um, there's a whole host of ways you can probably get that stuff to stay up there. But do just be aware of that with the wool. That's my one concern for the wool. I actually think it's probably a better insulator, to be honest, because it's, it's lower density. Um, so if you can get it to stay in place, and you might be able to get two inch wool compress as and make a great seal where you put the cap on the edges, but through the middle will stay two inches thick and that is that's probably the best insulation that you can get probably in my opinion. So um <clears throat> yeah there's that safety aspects of bare coils versus a tank filled with water with the coil inside. What are the benefits of a bare coil versus a tank filled with water? Oh, those are the same question. Safety aspects, or, and then, oh I see, what are the safety aspects, and then what are the benefits of either a bare coil, like an air to water heat exchange, or a water to water heat exchange? Um, so those are some great questions, and I, I'd love to talk about it if you guys have any input. I'd love it. Let's talk a little bit about water heating. There's so many ways you can do it, right? Um, you can use air to water where you have a coil kind of somewhere in a hot spot. And where you put that is really dependent on a lot of factors. Um, incoming water temperature, flow rate, uh, you know, what your goals are for you know, hot water production. All of those things are going to change where you put this air to water heat exchanger. An air to water heat exchanger does have some risks, right? You can get it so hot that it could flash the water steam instantly when the water comes in if, you're, if it ever runs dry. Um, it also is possible to be in such a hot spot and we have an output, the output of the riser at like 900 degrees. So if your water isn't moving fast enough, you can flash that to steam in no time and create a really dangerous situation. So air to water heat exchangers are really useful when you want the fastest heat exchange, but they do come with risks um, and they do kind of there's a there's a there's sort of a narrow window of operation there and, and a broad range of failure I guess is how I'll say it. Um, they require things to be balanced just right I guess is the way I would, the best way I would put that because you have to keep that 
coil under boiling by running fluid through it fast enough that it's cool enough to keep it at that temperature and, and you know where in the system it is and you know all those things are are variables. And so the, you know then when you run into talking about someone's individual system, you ask them you know, what size are their main pipes, you know, where is the water coming from? Is it is it in the tower? Is it warm? Is it cold coming out of the ground? Is it cold? Um, what kind of pump do they have? Can they run fluid through there quickly? Can they ensure that the pump won't fail? Um, so there's a lot of questions there. And so, you know, it's there's too much to really say when do we use this or when do we use that exactly. But what you can gather from this is that an air to water heat exchanger or, or coil in the hot parts of the stove is ideal for things when you want to uh, exchange heat quickly and you don't mind having some mechanical stuff involved. Um, you can make it faster and riskier by moving it closer to the riser, closer to the hot spot, and you can make it safer and slower as you move it farther away. So my general advice is I'll try and put that coil somewhere where I expect to be just a little hotter than boiling most times. Um, so I like to put it either like in the top of the oven section. That's somewhere that's going to be on average, you know, it'll rise up to 400, 450 degrees but it'll on average be around 300 degrees. And at that temperature, you can run water fluid through there at a, at a reasonable flow rate and really not have a very high risk of that or what. Um, as you, you know, change the system and your flows, you're going to probably want to move that coil higher and lower in that chamber stratification plays a big role in the temperature of where it is, you know, what's going on inside that chamber. Um, so there's a lot of ways okay. you can tune the stove by just uh. moving that around. Now that's just one way of doing that. Now in my ideal world, that coil is always going to be in a downdraft section of the stove, okay? Because any time the gases in the stove come in contact with that coil, they're going to cool. And as soon as they cool, they're going to contract and become more dense than the gases around them, which are hot, and so they will start to sink. So if you put the coil in a downdraft section, okay, you'll so. be working with the natural physics of the stove. The gases will want to flow down naturally through that coil as they are cooling, and so the stove will flow with less resistance and transfer to, to that water. So that's ready to go. Much better. So uh, now. that's the idea of the coil. Right. Put it yeah. somewhere where the air can flow, the gases can flow go down through it or around it, yes. um, and ideally somewhere where uh. it, the heat of the stove matches your goals. Now, I've had people who want to put the up, and they put that coil right over the line, and had a pump on it, and it works great for them. You can do a lot of water quickly, but you need to manage it. Um, so there is kind of a coil. Now, what about a water to water cleaning system? So, in this case, we have a tank full of water, in and we probably want to boil through that tank. And that's how I do my boiler. And the reason for that is it's just really simple and really safe and it offers a really wide range of operation that's safe. It can be really hot fire, cold fire, you can, you know, it's really hard okay. to create a dangerous situation. A big tank is open the atmosphere. If you boil, I love my grill part. Think you Regardless, it's going to be very really hard to flash oil anything in that coil because you have to boil the whole thing first. So with that said, now you can put that kind of really free where that tank can go in the system. You can put it right over as um, the email the edge of the reservoir port, flash right on the tank. Absolutely, because the water in the tank is going to protect that steel from ever overheating. So you can put it right over the um, riser. All dried out. 
shouldn't take much water at all to get it into a slurry, especially now that it's been screened. For really sensitive passive systems, you can put that tank somewhere way downstream. Like in my case, uh, of the tiny soap, I think a great place for a tank is the bottom oven chamber <laughs> because it'll never really get much above 250. So you almost don't have to ever worry about boiling. And in situations like that, you won't get all this out here. <laughs> Just because I can. So, it's about. So again, oh, you need all kinds of results. You just need one shower a day. I know, like a really simple water tank, way down the stream in my system, somewhere where it's just hanging out of it. And every time I pull off slurry, how you're going to use it? If it's not separated back down to water, and I don't think you can see it, but it's not completely separated. I'm just going to pour that right back in. Hydrate all that with it. See the idea uh, that you can and go for high that looks volume like water production. Mostly slurry left. Uh, more control and more management. Uh, and yes, it'll be loud. Uh, uh, and put it downstream and just have it be a really passive system. And, and it really, again, really depends on what you're going for. You're trying to get a family of five to shower all day and do laundry and wash dishes. Yeah, the dresser still has air in it. You know, you might do it. Bad, it didn't empty it last night. I'm going to use it again today. I'm going to fill it again later. You're going to run that boiler for a few days, heating up 1,200 gallons of water. Make more foam. Yeah. And recast that. For a few hours. Those are the ways. Go wrong. The stove really just provides the input into the water. It doesn't have any significant storage built in. You can definitely get large amounts of water and use large amounts of hot water, but you need much larger. Hello. Um, and then the calliope helper. Facility than you have in that in that small Ready? boiler. So, you know, for people who have larger needs. <laughs> Things and talking about conduction 
So, I bought all these bags of sand years ago, I've just been sitting in the yard, and because they've just been sitting in the yard, eh, they might have a little green on them, but I don't care, not that much, but our mixture needs to be quite a bit more sand than clay. Play goes far. So, with that in mind, we're trying small batches. Pull this stuff out. And yeah, there's still roots in the mixer. But, throw it on the ground. A rip, groove, and then if you went and graft there, but when you laid down cover top like you saw before, you'd rip that open, come through with a no-till planter. Which Ron Morris, who just who, who's demonstrating this, has since invented something that will come through and rip that open and drop compost or other organically a lot of fertilizers into that furrow, and then you can come right behind there with a planter. Like I told you, how to practice, yes, you know? we have background yeah, permaculture stuff going on. <laughs> Or if you have interns, yeah. they could be the planters and come through and pop them into those sections that you just open. YouTube has become my background noise. We're not there yet, but we hope to see. We're hoping to get Ron to make us one. We work. Have to keep talking before it was time to do that. talking about masonry, cement, heaters, yeah, materials, and the thermodynamics of different things. Okay, so different materials and heat span, all that good cool stuff. Um, so yeah, I basically yeah, study all day. Now we can't cover some of our tools there. I'm not trying to spread this out as much as I can. And I don't care if it's dirty or not. We'll see if it's okay. If not, I'll describe it to you. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be there next. All right. So, everybody. Everybody. Cool there's the ladder. Let's just show you how tall those tomatoes get. In a cob tutorial. We'll tell you. And it's better to do it by hand. So, get dirty, people. And roll down. And didn't die easily. This one here, a pile of cool villain. Converted to a well yeah. play. Um, say, if you thought I had guns before, it's really incredible. I got a new shirt size just for my arms. Higher as his farm. Just really loved to kill. I was trying to teach him not to kill. And he really like, you want know, that fine layer on top. He just really wanted it. A lot of people do, you know? I mean, Diane worked with me. She's going to break every fire. There we go. I'm just kind of like, that's all of that. No clots, fine, right. nice, easy, wonderful soil, right? Yeah. So finally, he heard me enough and he came up with this innovation. Like me, no. So like that nasty soil. And all it said done. And man, this took, man, that just makes flowers. All of this stuff is done. Never use right. it. Yeah. If you try to get a and you don't want the fertility, you might oh, use it. Then fine. So you want fertility? I don't want the And we got a bag of sand. Plus, we made it from the place above and over the top half of the structure. Oh, yeah. That's another time for us to pop into the section, pop to that. So we're going to do that. Spread that out. The first time I saw it, I probably did this thing just flipping, right? It was more disturbing. They actually I'm going to have to designate a pair of shoes. Yes. Head up that uh, kind of here. Odds are good. And now it's part of the going to be more. And he just donated a 1930s no coat here. They're doing it all the way back there. You know? And that's the pull by a tractor. They were 50 I cut this off a larger ranger sheet. You can pull it back. It's heavy enough to not that I had used before. 
But that, can you see what I'm doing? You're just kind of ripping, it's much less disturbing. And you're, you know, even right. when you leave that full time, you're really kind of here. You're flipping. So you're not flipping as much as you do. I don't know if I can get that you're to where you can see it or not. Where? You're flipping. Yeah, it's my back up. You can go away with that. But, you know, soil is a web of life, right? And there's life that is supposed to be here and life is supposed to be there. So, and life here. Is to be there. And you flip it now. I'm grab the cob. Grab the clay. Quiet or Excuse me. You're not helping. Are you helping? But not as good. Very helpful. Hello. Uh, you just touch. The way we're not looking at it, of course, I just said it was the beginning. It's going to take a while. There are other ways, but I want to say that after all this, can we go back? We even Jeff Hawkins is doing that kind of fun. Hi. It isn't fun. Yeah. That doesn't mean a first time to get more bad grasses and get get the bed, the right. field more level. I'm mixing my hand. Time, then you're not trying to get away from it after that. Does that make sense? It's kind of like mixing dough, which, as we all know, I bake a lot. But incorporating the sand into the clay is what we're working on. Hi. You are not helping. All those tools this is almost happy. like having a dog to help you with the painting. You just know she's going to end up covered in clay. Is this how much you want to use a file? Probably not that much. Yeah. Which will then, of course, flake off into my bed because she refuses uh -huh. to not sneak off into my room because, of course, it's a heated bed. Yeah, it's a lot of energy. So, and I think there's something else to do. Help her over here. Yeah, totally, yeah. Well, we're going to see very helpful. a version that was made to go behind the grill. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be in about 20 minutes. Yeah. I'm just going to keep uh, calling okay. her. So, this here is that day. We were out there. We looked at the saw this already. Um, yes, ma'am. This is where we find. And what's wrong with this? Oh. <sighs> This is all this stuff, the crisscrossing, right? John, you wouldn't want to have to try to run your machine through that, would you? Ain't gonna happen. It's not, not gonna work. There's a specific right? sound that we're now, looking we're for. We're another one, which I think if it was it probably would work, and I'd like to hear if you agree. Okay? Still, that's like a sizzle. Is, not at all. Uh, it's too hard to get through. You know, the more I do this, yeah, the more I miss that, living in New Mexico. You're trying to cut through it? It's no. the whole house. Ugh! <sighs> Still, just All the walls. Here, I think I say, yeah, kind of a better ship. We're cob. Over the tires. It was so quiet. The whole house that lady was hugging you. Trying to even use the frail wall. Despite my husband. We really have to peel with the rest in on ourselves, and then put the frail wall right by its wheel on the back wheel. Seriously, think about doing it. And like come out like a lawn mower. Over the walls to my bedroom. Uh, because of the crazy neighbor who likes to work on his car I agree that we're gonna with the rock and roll at 3 o'clock in the morning yeah. in his garage that's yeah. right up against my fence. I think this is and of course, course because mine's a waterbed, the sound travels right through the wall and right through the bed so well. I've been thinking about it since I bought this house, how I could either put foam boards, some sort of sound barrier. Against that guy. As defense of my sleep. Which must be one of the hard to come by. Not as hard as the best. The thing standing in front of this pile, that thing, does not help. Because it decides what time I want to get up. Despite my argument. Huh, don't you? That is the sun now, the change of problem. Try to be bigger that is. That's the top of it. Right? That's the new sister. And <laughs> we'll say one thing. Despite that it being nausea. 50 degrees in here right now, people know what I mean by nausea. And it'll take longer to set up. Houses for this much rhizobia bacteria. Activity rhizobia bacteria definitely keeps you warm. Though right? uh, so I may want to get a kneeling pad amazing, uh, for my knees. I don't know how much I forget how much I can fix this. I'm sure I'm impressed by the nausea. Okay, that's a good start, I think. Our sun lamp is so we have yet to add the straw, so and it's still it quite wet. Way through the winter, just a slow see. Cleaning, right? the slow fungal cleaning, covering the soil for a long time. 
<laughs> really impressive. This is my trick, right? This is my trick for when somebody said, how do you make a seed bed? And, you know, find a seed bed without doing some kind of thing. Like, you need biology and time. So we came in, we flail mode. So this then will we be structural can file. Can we tea, and anybody can look it up and tons of recipes, right? Yeah, we'll go to the outside perimeter of the bench. And, and also around the piers that will hold up the conduit. It's good down there, too. And then we guys just sit there for about eight weeks. Came back, nothing but fun. The pier is a deep humidifier. In the background, the living web, the living web farms lecture. Because that's how I. Now, with a mass of this thing. I never had that problem. We could bring our plants in. And I'm going to let it set for a minute. Compost started mixing these holes. Cover it up hold it back, back so that this it. thing doesn't get in it. Here, we direct seed it. Carrots, beets, and turnips. I'll we'll let that set for a little while. Decent with the plant, if you know oh. so heavily, so Next up, we'll be building, building the form really nice for the carrots. heat riser. We've got an aircrete one already started. That's what's in that container, right where my finger is, across the room. That is aircrete and perlite. I'm waiting for the sodium silicate to then seal that aircrete, even though it's going to be leaving the building. And it's probably only going to get maybe 100 degrees, so it doesn't really need it, but I want to test it on a small piece, so I'm doing it on that. And then the form for the heat riser will be perlite and Portland mixed with wood ash <laughs> and aircrete and then sealed with sodium silicate. So it should prove structural, uh, insulative, and refractory at the same time. So up as it goes up, it will be super hot. By the time it hits the top of the bell, it should be probably around around 1,200 degrees. I don't know. Um, the fire brick is rated for 2,600 degrees, and the first part of the, the heat riser is, in fact, fire brick. So the first nine inches is fire brick, and then I'm going to place the castable over the top of that. So I'm also setting the barrel so that I can pull the barrel off. So there will be two. Um, for a combined height of, of uh, 50 inches, the riser will come to 48 inches, and I'll be able to unsnap the barrel at 35, come down the barrel 35 because I have the, the ring still. So I'm going to join the, ris the risers together so I can pull the top barrel off, clean it, reset it, whatever I need to do, and then reseal it with a little heat gasket in with the O-ring uh, lid cap, yeah, right lid strap, whatever you want to call that thing. Uh, that was some work to get. Everybody's got barrels, but nobody has the lids or the, or the rings. <laughs> anyway, so that's where that's at.